Hello and thank you for joining me today. This is the first uh, video in our videos for certifying in Revit. Uh, there will be several videos. Uh, we'll also have an opportunity to take some practice tests and uh, things like that as well. So uh, starting with Revit, uh, the first objective is to create and modify grid lines. And in that video you're going to learn how to create and lay them out. Uh, you're going to rename them you're going to adjust spacing and let's see adjust spacing by equidistant and constrained distance and also change the bubble sides okay so to start with we need to go to the architecture tab look on the architecture ribbon and go down to the far right where you'll see grid lines and save the project if it asks you to I don't think I have named this one yet, so it will probably ask me to do that, and it did. Um, you don't have to do this part. You don't have to save it unless you want to. And if you name it, name it whatever you want to. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, but we want to create the lines first. So when we create the lines... Um, you know, there's many ways to, to put these grids down. Some people just put them down. Um, that's what I'll do a lot of times. I'll just put the grids down on a sheet of paper or on, on the screen. I don't care what distance they are apart. Or if you want it to be more uh, precise as you're placing them, uh, then you can also see the ghosted temporary measurement right there to the kind of the bottom of the cursor. If you see, I'm moving my cursor left and right, and you can see the numbers, the me measurements actually change. Okay, so I can actually set that to a distance that I want. Um, or I can just click and then, you know, put them out like so. Okay, and they do have some helpful guidelines that, that uh, helps you line all that stuff up. Okay, and do that. Put me a one more down. Okay, so here we go. All right, so as you see, they also have letters inside them. What we typically have with these, we have letters and numbers. Um, usually numbers across the top and letters down the sides. Uh, to do that, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Uh, click on the line itself first. That activates that grid line. You can come over to the properties panel and you can see the name right here. It says E. Well, I want that one to be 1. Okay. Or you can actually, again, activate the line, click inside the bubble, and name it just right there inside the bubble. I think both of them are just as quick. And this one will be number four. Okay, now of course again, we need letters down this side. Same thing, uh, just click in the bubble or navigate over here to the properties panel. We'll call that one A. Call this one B. Try it again, B. Call this one C. Call this one D, not DL. All right. Okay. So there we go. We got our grids named and numbered. Uh, but let's say you your bubbles didn't show up on the side that you wanted it to. You were just kind of drawing them out really quickly, and you really wanted these letters to show up over here on the other side. Uh, all you have to do is again activate the line, and you see this little check box at the end. You can ch turn the check box off, and that makes the bubble go away. Come over here to the other side, turn it on, and it, and it brings it back over here. Okay, of course, you can also have it on on both sides if you want to. I don't know, sometimes people do that. Okay, so let's just move all those over to this side. And I hope you're following along on your own copy of Revit, so you can kind of get a hands-on uh feeling of how this works okay now there's um we got to distance these there are distances that they should be apart and of course you don't really know if if you haven't really drawn the plan out on a sheet of paper or anything like that first uh, of course usually sometimes this also uh, involves an engineer um you know typically if, if it's especially if it's going to be of a steel structure 
you'll definitely need an engineer to take a look at it. If you're just build, doing or designing a residential structure, it doesn't matter. You can use the grids however you want to, space them out however you want to. Um, sometimes people space them out according to key locations and things of that nature. But let's say we need to have them a specific distance apart. Um, let's just say I want these to be equidistant right here, the top ones to be equidistant. So I'm going to go to Annotate tab. I'm going to click on the Aligned Dimension. And I'm going to basically just dimension the lines. Okay, I'm going to click here. And you see this equal right here in the center of that line. And then you've got a slash mark going through it. And then you can just click on the EQ and that makes them equal, equal distance apart. I don't know what the distance is. I would have to measure it to be sure. Okay, so if I measured it, they're coming up at 28 feet and 2 inches. Okay, but let's say you really need to have a specific distance apart. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and move this one up a little bit. Okay, so let's say you need them to be 25 feet apart. Uh, in order to move them, I want to move the B line. Okay, A is going to stay where it's at. B is going to move, which isn't going to happen right now because A is, is activated. So I need to activate B and then come to this temporary measurement right there and type 25 feet okay and I'm going to do it again right here activate C it says 25.6 or 25 6 inches I just want it to be 25 okay and D I want it to be 25 also which is gonna result in me having to stretch a few lines there okay so there we are that's how you space um, and distance those grid lines uh, we talked about changing the bubble uh, locations also changing the names of each of those bubbles so there you have your grid layout